This is a what if that I never got around to finishing. My mistake. My mind just runs wild with so many stories, sometimes I forget some of the ones I never finished. Honestly, I should finish them, so if there are any stories that I've yet to finish that you want to see a conclusion to, remind me in the comments and I'll see what I can do to finish them. Anyway, this story was one where I threw Naruto into Akatsuki and decided to see where it went. As children, he grew close with Nagato, Yahiko, and Konin, and now as an adult, he's become a fairly successful shinobi. The four of them inspired the hearts of others and founded a new organization designed to bring peace. In the end though, that organization was targeted by those who feared their power who did not want their peace. Led into a trap, Yahiko found himself killed and Naruto gravely wounded. What can be done now? Is this truly the end of the Akatsuki as we now know it? Or will they rise like a phoenix out of the ashes and begin anew? Welcome to the Amagi. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. We've noticed that a lot of people who do enjoy our videos aren't actually subscribed to our channel. This is probably because YouTube is really good at recommending our stuff to you, but if you want to support the Amagi and see lots more videos like this, please click that subscribe button. Thanks so much. The Amagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. Nagato saw Yahiko on the end of his blade and was astonished. What had happened? Why was he dying? Why was Yahiko dying? He hadn't had the time to process it. Despite his Rinnegan being capable of witnessing even the quickest of movements as if time had slowed down, he simply could not process what had just happened. Maybe he just couldn't bring himself to believe that this was happening. His head on Nagato's shoulder, Yahiko let off a weak smile. Thank you for helping me with my dream. I pass it to you, Nagato. And with that, Yahiko fell. Nagato was in shock. He didn't understand what had happened. As he looked at the body, he found it truly unbelievable. But suddenly, the truth snapped back to him and he recognized what had just happened. And with that horrible truth revealed, his very mind shattered. With a cry, his Rinnegan activated. From below, the ghetto statue arose to heed the call of its master, all while Conan watched on in horror. Nagato! Naruto was laying there on the ground, his body covered by one of his men. He felt the hole in his stomach and the warmth of his blood leaking from within. His eyes began to close. A light opened to him and he thought of passing through that light. On the other side, he heard indistinct chattering, voices and laughter of people of all kinds. He heard the wind and the sound of birds chirping. It sounded like the most peaceful world he could ever dream about. He smiled, bathed in its radiance. He tried to walk through, but was stopped. It was as if an invisible wall were blocking his path. He pressed up against it, but it didn't make way for him. He was confused. Suddenly, from within the light, he saw Yahiko. Naruto looked into the eyes of his friend. Y yahiko you're dead too. I was too late. Yahiko shook his head. No, you're not too late. It may be over for me, but not for Nagato and not for Konin. I need you to hold on. Nagato's losing himself. He's scared, he's angry, and he's losing himself in his pain. I need you to hold on and remind him of who he is. Don't let him use my death as a reason to give up on the world. Naruto nodded. Yahiko hugged him. Naruto, you're like a brother to me. We lived and died together for years. I'll always be grateful. You, Nagato, and Konin were each my own little slice of a peaceful world. When I lost faith, when I needed rest, I would merely look back at you three and remember why I was fighting. I love you all." Naruto returned the embrace tightly as tears rolled down his cheek. I don't know what to do without you. Yahiko pat him on his back. You'll figure it out. You always do. And with that, Naruto was pulled away from the light and back down to earth, where his eyes opened once more to see Konin. Naruto, she cried as she rolled the body off of him. She rolled Naruto over and saw his wound. She would use her paper to cover him in hopes of staunching the bleeding. Conan, he whispered weakly. I'm here, she said as she helped him up. She wrapped him around her shoulder and moved back to Nagato, who she had left slumped against a tree. She too put Nagato's arm around her shoulder, and with a loud grunt, just less than a cry, she lifted them up. 
Slowly but surely, she made it back to Ame proper, and to their base where she lay them both down. She wheezed heavily, attempting to catch her breath. She needed to get to a doctor quickly. She knew that it wouldn't be long until Hanzo retaliated. Heck, he'd be on his way right now. But she didn't have time to worry about that. She went and found the most trusted doctor she could, one she knew was sympathetic to their now fractured cause. She brought him back to their base and left him to work on Nagato and Naruto. He began working on Naruto, who was the one bleeding the most currently. He managed to stop the bleeding and was glad to say that no internal organs were damaged. He then set upon working on Nagato, who he nearly called a lost cause. Nagato had a plethora of rods sticking out of his back. The doctor couldn't remove them as it might actually do more damage to him than leaving them in. He had so much of his chakras siphoned out that he was left looking like a skeleton wearing a thin layer of skin. His legs were heavily burned in an irreversible way. All the same, Nagato's eyes remained open. He was conscious, but was not reactive in any way. It seemed he was in shock. The doctor did what he could for him, but was honest. He's not going to be able to live like this, not without some form of help. I doubt he'll ever walk on his own again. I can't help him. Conan looked to the doctor. Hanzo's put out a hit on us. We need to get out of the village. Can you help? The man nodded. Go through the sewers. There's a secret tunnel. If you take it, it will lead you out of the village. You will need a boat to get to shore, and I can get you one, but I'll need to go ahead to prepare it. Can you get these two up? Conan nodded. The doctor looked at Naruto, who at present was getting a blood transfusion. As soon as that bag is empty, hit him with this. He gave her a syringe. This should get him back on his feet quickly. Conan thanked him. The doctor shook his head. Don't thank me yet. You're not out of the woods. Once Naruto's up, tell him to help you get Nagato into the sewers. Follow my plan. He gave her a map. This should lead you out from here. Good luck. And then he left. Conan kept an eye out for Shinobi. There was no doubt that Hanzo knew of their location by now. Special forces could be on them at any moment. She looked back at Naruto, who was nearly done with his transfusion. A proximity alarm goes off, and Conan hears it. No time! She goes to Naruto and hits him with the syringe to get him up. As the medicine takes effect, Naruto's eyes shoot open and he sits up. We're under attack, he shouts. Conan put her hand out to calm him. Yes, but we can survive this. I just need you to help me. She looks out of the door and turns the lights off. She comes to Nagato and looks him over. She walks back to Naruto and takes his yet-to-be-empty IV and takes it off the rack before taping it to his chest. Naruto looks at it and then looks at the hole in his cloak to find the bandages covering his wound. He then follows her to Nagato. Naruto, can you carry Nagato on your back? Naruto looks at his friend, barely recognizable. What happened to him? There's no time, Naruto. If you can carry him on your back, please do so. Naruto sighed and hauled him up onto his back with a grunt, twinges of pain radiating from his wounds. He ignored them and managed to get him up. I'm ready. Conan nodded and took out a kunai and began to lead them on. They heard the sounds of paper bombs exploding as doors came crashing down. They're already inside, she said as she changed directions. She pointed toward the hall behind Naruto. That way, go that way. Naruto began to go as Conan began to paste paper bombs to the wall and camouflage them. We need to slow them down. Naruto looked back as if waiting for her. Conan looked to him. Don't stop, keep going. Naruto, without a peep, kept going down the hall. Conan finished laying her trap. She extended it so that those not killed in the blast would find the path inaccessible. This should buy us some time, she said as she caught up with Naruto. She led him down the stairwell to the lowest floor, the basement. There were pipes lining the walls. She heard her trap go off, exploding. The building shook as concrete began to drop from the ceiling. Conan pulled Naruto back to keep him and Nagato from being struck by a rather large piece. Pay attention, she said. She led them further through until they found two large metal doors on the ground. She opened them up to reveal a ladder. She helped Naruto get Nagato off his back. She held Nagato. She looked to Naruto. Go down, I'll lower Nagato to you. Naruto began to step down the ladder. His feet landed in the water with a splash. It stank in there, but it was the smell of their final hope. Conan began to lower Nagato down with a rope. Naruto took his friend and put him on his back again. Conan too began to crawl down into the sewers. As she did, she closed the panels behind her to keep the entrance from being conspicuous. Coming down into the water, she pulled out a flashlight. She looked at her map. Come on, we need to hurry. They could be on us at any time. They began to make their way deeper through the sewers. As they did, she kept an eye out and realized that nobody was after them yet. Considering the maze of corridors and tunnels that the sewers offered, she began to feel at this point that their chances of escape had increased exponentially. 
As they continued to walk, they came to the end of the pipe which led to the waters outside. There was a single boat waiting for them. The doctor they trusted waved them in. Conan jumped down into it as Naruto lowered Nagato to her. She took him and moved inside so Naruto could get in. As soon as everyone was in the boat, they began to take off. Naruto sat there, wincing in pain as it seems his wounds had reopened. He took the now empty IV bag and removed it from his veins before throwing it into the water. Conan looked to him. Are you okay? He looked at her and nodded. I'll be fine, but tell me this, is Nagato okay? Conan looked at her friend who now seemed to be asleep. She pressed her fingers to his neck. Yeah, he's asleep. Naruto sighed in relief. What happened to you? He asked her. She looks down at her feet. We were going to meet with Hanzo, but it was a trap. He brought a multitude of shinobi with him and was prepared to kill us. He took me hostage and then demanded that Yahiko be killed by Nagato. Nagato didn't want to do it, but Yahiko killed himself to save me anyway. The loss awakened Nagato's Rinnegan and he summoned that statue thing again. It attached to his back with rods and he used it to effortlessly wipe out the shinobi holding me hostage. His legs were badly burned. Naruto rubbed his face as he sat forward. Yahiko. Conan was silent. Naruto looked up. He edged closer to her. You're okay, right? You're not hurt? She shook her head. Physically, no. He nodded solemnly. He rested his hand on her knee. We'll get through this. She shook her head. How? Yahiko's gone. He was our leader. Naruto thought about this for a moment. Do you remember Chibi? Conan's eyes lit up. She hadn't thought about their puppy for a long time. Naruto continued. Remember when he was killed? We thought that was the end of the world. We thought we could never move on. Remember how Yahiko told us that night that Chibi lives on inside of us, and so long as we keep his memory alive, he will be alive? Conan nodded. Naruto continued. We have to do the same with Yahiko. We will remember. We will make it through this. Conan began to cry. Naruto hugged her. The boat came to a stop at the edge of the water. They got out and began to move. We need to find a safe place to stay. Some place where we can help Nagato. The kind doctor who'd helped them escape spoke. The closest village is Kusa. Just head north and you should make it. But I don't recommend walking on foot. Not with your friend like that. There's a trading post here. If you can manage to steal a horse and a cart, it should be easier. Naruto nodded. Thank you. The kindly man smiled. Just be careful. They began to move north until they found the trading post. Conan felt bad about stealing from the innocent, but it needed to be done to save a life. Surely this was understandable. Given that she was the only one not wounded, she decided to go in alone. It wasn't all that hard. There weren't many guards. The escape had to be quick though, as a horse and cart weren't silent. Once she was out, she loaded Naruto and Nagato up. As they went on their way, Naruto spoke. We knew you were in trouble. We were coming to help you. Conan listened. We know you were. We found the bodies. I'm sorry you couldn't save your team. Naruto shook his head. We weren't attacked by Amenin. Conan seemed surprised. Even Nagato's eyes raised to listen to him. Naruto then spoke. That man with the swirling mask we turned away from our organization? He was the one who attacked us. Conan was confused. Wait, that Toby guy was the one who killed your team? Naruto nodded. Him and someone else. Some monstrous looking fellow, half black, half white, shaped like a Venus flytrap. They killed us, no problem. I mean, we didn't even have a chance. We couldn't even touch him. It was like he was intangible. Conan listened. I knew there was something wrong with him, Nagato growled. He and Hanzo, they're the reason Yahiko's dead. There was silence from that point on as they boiled on the situation. They eventually made it to Kusa where they enlisted the help of other medical nin. Naruto was healing fine, but Nagato needed more extensive treatment, particularly for his legs to ensure that no infection occurred. Nagato needed constant medical attention due to his wounds. This became debilitating for him after a while due to his inability to move freely, but he continued to experiment with the powers of his Rinnegan. Due to the unexpected abilities he'd displayed, he began to test the limits of his power and began to discover other ways to help himself. He asked that Conan and Naruto retrieve the body of Yahiko, their dear friend. They managed to do so with a little bit of sneakery. Nagato attempted to use his six paths techniques to bring Yahiko back to life, but he found the strain of such a technique too great and knew that it would ultimately kill him if he forced it. That was something he was willing to do, but Naruto and Conan begged him not to. Despite this, he could partially resurrect Nagato using his six paths technique, although there was no soul within. 
an empty shell that was only barely considered to be alive due to the six paths techniques he used. He would learn that, with his chakra, he could control this body as if it were his own. He spread his soul between the two. In this way, he could regain mobility while utilizing Yahiko's body. At first, Naruto was a little upset, feeling as if Nagato was using Yahiko's body in a disrespectful manner, but eventually he came to understand his true feelings. This was Nagato's way of keeping him alive. The dream had been passed to Nagato, and Nagato explained that with his Six Paths technique, he could then use Yahiko's body to complete that plan. The issue with this, however, was that Nagato could not control it over long distances. Eventually, the body would no longer be able to be controlled once it left a certain area. But the more he experimented, the better he grew, until eventually he could utilize the Ashura path to create something for him that would allow him to be mobile even if his body didn't want to be moved. And due to this, they could continue on their way. During this time, in Kusa, they met two people, both of whom had come to know Jiraiya. One was a farmer, the living version of the Preta path, and the other was a priest, the living version of the Naraka path. Hoping to create the next generation of Akatsuki with which to take down Hanzo, they recruited these men. Nagato, Naruto, and Konin continued on their journeys. They ended up traveling to Takigakure where they stayed for a while. These nomads would eventually discover a man, the living version of the human path, who believed in peace, but also believed that the best thing they could do was to teach people how to survive war until peace came. Nagato and this shinobi oftentimes sparred mentally, letting their philosophies on peace clash. In the end, Nagato's own belief on peace began to shift, believing that the only way peace could be attained was by forcing war. Make those who would kill too scared to initiate another war by forcing them to endure pain from the last. Explaining their goals and what they had done and what they planned to do, this shinobi gave up his post to follow Nagato and his new Akatsuki. As they continued to travel, however, they came upon a certain village, and while there, Nagato witnessed a man with puppets, the living Ashura path. He was good with puppets. His combat skills with puppets were almost without peer, but he was a kind-hearted man who also used his puppets for entertainment. On many occasions, this man could be seen making children smile with his puppets, something that brought a smile to Nagato's face. He would approach this man, hoping that he would become the next member of the Akatsuki. He approached him under the guise of needing to learn puppetry. The man would witness the clunky machine Nagato was using and stated that he believed it to be too slow and energy consuming. So he built for Nagato a puppet that would carry him. It wasn't too fancy, but it was compact enough to be of lighter weight as well as strong enough to carry everything he needed to stay relatively healthy within the main compartment. He taught him how to control it with his chakra, something that further helped Nagato extend the distance of use he could use with his diva path by incorporating some of the techniques this man possessed, including the concept of chakra rods. He invited this man to follow him, telling him that if he did, he would eventually lead the world to peace. So the traveling puppeteer began to follow them too. Naruto and Conan began to feel a bit of kinship between these new members. As they moved on happily towards, passing through the land of fire, however, they're attacked by a band of thieves. These thieves are led by a Fuma clan member with a rather large scar on his forehead, the first animal path while he was still alive. He's swiftly defeated. He's revealed to have been quite a broken man. His actions during the Great War have left him broken with nothing. He almost seems to beg Nagato to kill him, but Nagato refuses, saying that he has understood pain, and tells him that he should join him and give up his life for something bigger than either of them. This man immediately agrees. From here, Nagato makes his way to Kirigakure. It's a land that reminds him of Ame a bit, and so he decides to set up shop there, taking particular missions to help sustain themselves. They become well known within Amegakure, however, and this becomes a threat to Kiri, who are now losing their work and funding to the Akatsuki, who seem to be capable of doing their missions faster and more efficiently than the standard shinobi of Kiri. This gets them on Yagata's bad side. Yagata would eventually send his seven ninja swordsmen after them. The most elite shinobi in all of Kiri were dispatched to take down the Akatsuki, and to their credit, they actually do quite well. They managed to kill most of the Akatsuki, save the three core members and the Diva Path. However, the tide turns in Nagato's favor when he resurrects the dead Akatsuki members to become his Six Paths of Pain. 
Most of the seven ninja swordsmen were wounded and fled, all save Zabuza Momochi, who was captured by Nagato. It's revealed that Yagata had been acting strangely during this time as Mizukage, and that Zabuza was just about fed up with it. Seeing the same kind of corruption in Kiri as he did in Ame, Nagato decided that it was time that the Akatsuki stepped up and did something about it. He offered Zabuza one chance to redeem himself, stating that if he joined with the Akatsuki, they would overthrow Yagata and free his people. And in return, Zabuza would continue to serve the Akatsuki to make up for the members he'd killed. Zabuza agrees to this and begins to help Nagato form a resistance, even bringing Haku into the group. Naruto would seem a little nervous. Should we really be assisting a revolt? Don't we want to bring peace? Nagato would confront Naruto on this. We seek peace, yes, but there are many who don't want peace. Those who would stand in the way of peace need to be removed from the path. Yagata is one of those people. Naruto begins to shake his head. Nagato, I don't think this is what Yahiko would have wanted. Nagato sighs. Yahiko can't want anything anymore. Naruto shakes his head. No, Yahiko lives on inside of us. You're letting your pain eat away at you, and you're forgetting who you are, who you truly are. Nagato snaps at him. Don't try and tell me who I am. Naruto takes a step back, startled by this outburst. Nagato takes a couple deep inhalations to catch his breath. He lets off a cough. Don't try and tell me who I am. We tried it Yahiko's way and it got him killed. Naruto shook his head and looked down. What could he say? Nagato was right. Yahiko's idealistic way was so beautiful, but it had proven to be naive. Nagato was correct in saying that there were people who needed to be dealt with, people who didn't want peace, but he worried that Nagato was going too far. Together, they all made a plan. Their coup d'etat would consist of a single action, an assassination attempt. They would hit Yagata when he wasn't expecting it and attempt to assassinate him. Zabuza would explain his plan to the Akatsuki and to his own group of sympathizers. Yagata goes to this lake here to meditate. It helps him control and master his tailed beast. When he does this, he leaves most of his security detail behind, save a few. If we can get in, we can take him out. Nagato looked at the plan. With our forces, it shouldn't be too hard. Naruto looked at the plans. If we throw everything we have at him, we might actually be able to. If this is truly what you want to do, that is. Nagato ignored the last comment tacked onto Naruto's opinion. Then it's what we will do, he said. When's the next time this will occur? Zabuza looked over the schedule. It should happen at around noon tomorrow. And so they waited. Eventually the time came and the group set out to the lake. Nagato would head off to a secret location under the protection of Haku while the rest of the group and these six paths moved on to the lake. The six paths of pain along with Naruto, Zabuza, and the demon brothers kept to the trees, moving. Nagato, through the diva path, spoke to them. When we get there, we neutralize the guard detail by any means necessary, and then we make our way to Yagata. As they perched in the trees, they looked out over their quarry. Pain utilized his rain tiger at will jutsu, causing it to rain, allowing him to sense anyone within it. I have a mark on everyone's location. There are three guards to the west, and three to the east. Yagata is already meditating on the surface of the lake. It's only a matter of time until they realize we're here. Go. And so, the group systematically made their way around the lake, neutralizing the guards. They would then step out onto the lake's surface and begin to make their way closer to Yagata, who had his back turned. They had hoped that he wouldn't notice them, but deep down in their heart of hearts, they knew he was already aware of their presence. But at this point, it didn't matter. Even if he had a tailed beast, the six paths of pain, as well as Naruto and Conan, aided by Zabuza and the Demon Brothers, that made up a total of 11 shinobi, meaning that Yagata was horribly outnumbered. Yagata would sigh. I had hoped it wasn't true. He stands. I guess the mole was correct. There is a coup in the works. He looks to Zabuza. It truly is a shame. I had hoped that you wouldn't be so stupid as to turn against me after everything I've done for you. Zabuza pulled out the executioner's blade. Yagata would stand there unfazed. You've yet to realize that this is a trap, haven't you? Suddenly from under the water, the remaining members of the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist arose. Behind them, Hunter Nin appeared. They were surrounded. Naruto and Conan seemed to panic a little, though Pain stood resolute, eyes full of confidence, stature declaring to the world that none would defeat him. Bring the seven ninja swordsmen. Bring ten. Bring a hundred. It makes no difference how many you bring. If I've decided you die, then you're dead, merely waiting to have your body picked up. Yagata laughed at this. You're too hilarious. It's sad that you have to die. He snapped his fingers. Suddenly, the seven ninja swordsmen, technically six right now due to Zabuza's defection, rush at the group. Naruto jumps back, seeing the group of Hunter Nin coming in from behind. He looked to Conan who spoke. Protect Pain! Naruto and Conan rush towards the shinobi with their weapons, working in tandem with the Demon Brothers who are rushing at them as well to defend Zabuza. 
All the while, Pain, his six paths, and Zabuza were left to face the seven ninja swordsmen. Jinin Akabino rushed at Diva with his axe and hammer. Pain formed a chakra rod and caught the axe, but suddenly Jinin smashed the axe's blunt side with his hammer, shattering the rod. Diva dodged back and used his water release, exploding water colliding wave technique on Jinin to create distance. All the while, Raiga with his Kiba, both blades connected to the hilt, spun quickly and attacked Zabuza. Zabuza was at a disadvantage here. The Kiba blades were quick and agile, while his Executioner's blade was large and harder to maneuver. This meant that Raiga had a speed advantage here. Raiga would admit how sad it is that Zabuza defected. Zabuza would mention that he had heard that Raiga himself was not content with the way the village worked, and asked him to join him instead. Raiga shook his head and said that he would not. He had to have a place to properly take care of Ranmaru, who was a disabled boy that Raiga had seemingly adopted. It was because of these similar feelings and attachments that Raiga and Zabuza had a mutual respect for each other. It was further because of this mutual respect that they refused to go easy on each other. To honor the other as the great warrior they were, they would do their best to kill one another. Kushimaru Kuriarare was engaging the animal path with his blade Noibari. The blade possessed a wire at the end of it which threatened to sew the six paths together. This was a dangerous tool, as if used correctly, it could sew all of the paths together collectively, limiting their movement and making a kill shot on all of them at once as easy as cutting a leak. Animal Path summoned its Cerberus and its drill-beaked bird. Kushimaru would use his blade to pierce the bodies of both animals and sew them together, effectively taking them out of the battle. Animal Path rose from the surface of the water, utilizing the massive centipede in its arsenal. Fuguki Suikazan, with Samehara in his grasp, would attack the Predapath, swinging his blade. Honestly, Nagato believed these two to be evenly matched. After all, Samehara's power was to absorb the chakra of any it struck, which just so happened to be the same ability as the Predapath. As the two continued to battle, Jinpachi would attack the Human Path with his blade, Shibuki. The Human Path was not the strongest, and due to this, the moment it is attacked by Shibuki, it's covered in explosive tags and detonates. Conan looks back and sees this explosion and then taps Naruto's shoulder. I'm going back to the main party. Can you handle this? Naruto nods. Go! Conan rushes across the surface of the water toward the seven ninja swordsmen. She would utilize her own paper bombs to form shuriken. Seeing Jinpachi, she would throw her tags towards him, which he would catch with his blade. Did you really think you would hit me? Conan smiled. No, because I wasn't aiming for you. Jinpachi is confused. Suddenly, he realizes that the shuriken he caught are made of paper bombs. They all detonate at once, further setting off a chain reaction within the sword, causing it to detonate as well, killing Jinpachi. All the while, Naraka Path is busy collecting the remains of the Human Path to feed to the King of Hell in hopes of reviving him. Conan is then attacked by Yagata himself. As Diva faces Jinin, he's pierced through the throat by a chakra rod. Diva grips the rod and with a quick jerk snaps his neck. Fuguki and the Preta Path struggle against each other evenly. Before he can notice it, the Diva Path appears and stabs him through the heart with a chakra rod. Fuguki falls to his knees and then sinks below the waves. Zabuza falls to his knees as Raiga jumps back. Zabuza's body is covered in wounds and he's out of breath, and he knows he can't fall here. Raiga waits for his adversary to get up. All the while, Kushimaru is pushed back by a centipede. The animal path smiles. Suddenly, from below the waves, a large crab bearing Rinnegan eyes comes up, its claws gripping both Kushimaru and Raiga. Kushimaru attempts to stab through its claw, but it's heavily armored. It kills Kushimaru by severing him in two. It attempts to crush Raiga as well, in which it's mostly successful. But at the last moment, before he's severed in two, he manages to stab it with Kiba, sending massive amounts of electricity into the creature, driving it off. Raiga falls, fatally wounded. Zabuza would approach him. Raiga would cough. Damn it, I got killed. Zabuza nods. Raiga looks up. Zabuza. If you survive this, promise me one thing. Promise me on your pride as a swordsman that you will take care of Ranmaru. Zabuza nods. I'll take care of him, I promise. Raiga smiles, and with that, he takes his last breath. Zabuza lets him sink below the waves. He stands and grips the Executioner's blade tightly. Yagata would slide back, away from Conan. He would realize that his seven ninja swordsmen were dead. Weaklings. Fine, I'll do it myself. He then hunches over and enters his version 2 chakra cloak. Zabuza, Conan, and the Six Paths of Pain converge on each other. From behind, the crustacean that had killed both Raiga and Kushimaru would approach Yagata, hoping to do to him the same thing. Suddenly, Yagata turns and with a roar, fires a tailed beast ball strong enough to rip the massive crab to pieces. He would then rush forward and attack the group. 
Zabaza would swing the Executioner's Blade, which would make contact with the hide of Yagata, but upon colliding with the Crimson Shell, the blade snaps in two, leaving him open. Yagata turns to slash at Zabaza, but Divapath uses Almighty Push to blow Zabaza away from the battle to protect him. Conan stands there in awe. Nagato, how do we beat this thing? Pain looks at it. He's covered in a thick shell of chakra. We may be able to kill him if we manage to remove the shell in one place. He looks over. We'll utilize the Preta Path to weaken the shell. Then we'll use the Ashura Path to take advantage of the hole we create. We must hold it down. Together, they rush the version 2 Yagata. Diva uses Universal Pull to drag Yagata to him. Ashura then rushes Yagata with a Lariat to knock him away. In each hand of the Ashura path is a paper bomb, and in the middle of his Lariat, he attaches the six bombs to Yagata, meaning as soon as Yagata is done tumbling, he'll be engulfed in a fiery explosion. Yagata is left there, wounded. His shell took most of the brunt, but the concussive force seemed to break through the shell and actually hurt him, which is displayed by how much blood he coughs up. As he lays in the water, suddenly the Pretapath comes from underneath and grips him from behind. He begins to siphon his chakra, which causes the shell to slowly dissipate on his underbelly. As soon as enough of an opening was created, the Ashura Path jumps into the air, forms a blade with his arm, and plunges it deep into Yagata's heart. Yagata coughs up blood as slowly his form leaves him, and in that moment, something in his eyes changes. Diva walks over along with Conan. Yagata looks into the sky. Am I... am I free? Conan looks down with confusion. Free. Yagata smiles. I'm free from the swirling masked man's control. I'm free. He then passed away. Diva and Conan look at each other. Swirling masked man, she asks. Pain nods. It seems the root of this, Toby, go deeper than anticipated. He turns around and leaves. The battle is won and the coup is successful. Zabaza Momochi ends up becoming the new Mizukage and extends his thanks to the Akatsuki. He offers his village as a place where they can rebuild. They accept. However, Nagato tells them that it won't be like this for long. Soon, he plans to return to Ame and avenge Yahiko. And then, then he's going to turn his eyes towards the true enemy, the man in the swirling mask. And scene. I must admit, I really enjoyed bringing all of the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist into this. I've never actually used them before, not in any real capacity. To be honest, these seven ninja swordsmen are some of my favorite shinobi, as their weapons were something I always truly loved. Of course, my favorite blade happens to be Kubikiri Bocho. It's kind of a vanilla blade, and the only real thing it has going for it is its size and ability to reforge itself through the blood of its victims. To be frank, that sounds really awesome. But considering the gimmicks so many of the other ones have, from sewing threads to explosive tags, just being a big sword that regenerates seems a little lackluster. But all the same, it's my favorite still. And its design and its usage have always made me smile, not to mention that it was the first one I ever witnessed. But anyway, what did you think of the video? Did you like it? If so, leave a comment below and tell me what your favorite scene was. Until next time, my friends. Peace. Did you enjoy our video? Well, then be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi. And make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.